Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Nerdish. I'm Brendan. Uh, Brady's here, but he's behind the computer. I guess he's coming up. <laughs> and uh, Levi is not here. He is celebrating his sister's birthday. What a loser, am I right? Shh, family. Family. Um, all right, <laughs> we're just going to jump into it. Uh, I'm going to be going over uh, what Levi coined mirroring coefficients. Um, I like kind of generalizing it a little more, maybe calling it constants in coefficients. Also, hey, Amber Muffin, good to see you. Whoops. It's a kind of nice marker. He's been waiting a whole hot minute for us to get started. Well, now we've started. Also, Amber, if you have any questions, let us know. We can toss those up. Um, so with math, what we really like to stress is recognizing um, or recognition. So being able to recognize things in the question um, so you know what to do, right? We've kind of gone over this with the science section on the ACT. You look at the question and then that'll point you to where you need to find the answer uh, in the actual science passage. For math, it's all about recognizing patterns and saying, oh, this is what they want me to do. All right, now one way to do that is, and it's an effective way, is to just do tons and tons and tons of math problems. I'm not necessarily recommending you just go and do, you know, 100 math problems a day for the next month, and then I guarantee at that point, you'll probably be doing pretty fine for the test, but that's not really what we're going for here. Um, for constants and coefficients, or constant and coefficient questions, um, there's a few things that are consistent. The first being, there are going to be some constants. Um, and they will tell you that they are constants, right? So for example, you might have A and B are your constants, or even A, B, and C are your constants. What does constant mean, my lord? Constant means it is just a value. So if you have X, we call it a variable, right? Because it varies, it changes. A constant is still going to be some value, but it won't change. So if I had an equation and it was 4A, right? That would always be the same answer because A doesn't change value. It may be one, it may be 10, it may be 100, but it's never changing. Whereas what you're used to with X's and Y's, they're going to be constantly changing. They are variable, um, so we, that's why there are variables. Some brilliant, brilliant person thought of that way back when. The next, uh, the next thing uh, that is important, so, so far, um, and I don't want to bash any of the other free online resources because they are still great. Uh, but there are a lot of places that give you practice math problems for the SAT. Um, and a const constant and coefficient questions are pretty much only on the SAT. I have not seen any on the ACT, at least for what I'm about to go over, these specific questions. Um, this next part is what all of them seem to miss. Uh, all of these practice books that we've seen that I won't name because I don't want to bash. Um, some websites, they always tend to forget. You do want to bash, you're just not going to. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'll <laughs> correct. I would love to name them and just say, look, these guys just are doing it wrong. But that's not why we're here. We're there here to go. teach. Absolutely. They will say something along the lines of, and it's usually a variation of one of these two things, which is going to be it's true for all values of x. Or um, they will say there are infinitely many solutions um, for x. Why is this important? Why is this the second point? And I'm only going to have two points here, right? Uh, why are why is this necessary? Well. It allows us to, um, it proves for us or it tells us for sure that we're going to have symmetry on both sides of the equal sign. All right, this proves symmetry. Two M's? Tell me out, Brady. Huh. Two M's for symmetry? Oh, my God. Uh, yes. Uh, all I ask is that you kind of pay attention when I'm writing because I, I don't spell well. Someone said something. No, you're going to be in the camera, by the way. No. no. All right, thanks. This proves symmetry, and what I mean by that, I don't like to do the verbal. 
Um, <laughs> what, I, what I mean by that is if I were to say that I'm going to have um, 4ax equals 12x, and I said that there is a constant a, and I told you that this is always true. Okay, this is true for all values of x. I can prove that there, the value that a is, it has to be three. I have to get 12x equals 12x, meaning a equals three. Why is there an extra ue and q? Because in theory, it's supposed to be a really long q of questions. Also, Draenor85, how you doing? I think this is the first time we've seen you. Welcome to the stream. Feel free to continue asking questions. Um, so we know a has to be three. This is a very simple example, um, but what we're gonna do with some of these more comp complicated or complex examples is we're going to break them down into um, parts like this. So my favorite math problem, probably in the entire SAT series, mm -hmm. Um, we're going to do last because it's a little bit more difficult. Is it number 15? Yeah, it's number 15 on SAT practice test one on the non-calculator section. Um, but we're not going to pull it up. Let me see. I have it. I have some questions on my phone from the SAT. And they're the free online SATs you guys can find anywhere. Okay. So in this equation, I'm going to write it up and I'm going to clear some of this out of the way. Uh, but I want to leave this up for now. Hey, Thomas Boxley, thank you for the follow. Mm. I appreciate that. Good to see you. We went to high school together. He also streams, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. All right, we have 2x times 3x plus 5. Ooh, I'm writing this. That's fine. Plus 3 times 3x plus 5 equals, and I ran out of space, so let's bring that down. I have ax squared plus bx plus c. They tell us in the question, let's get this back up, that a, b, and c are all constants. Okay, check. We've got that. If the equation is true for all values of x, bingo, what is the value of b? So I'm trying to Solve for b. Now, I write it this way on purpose. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I like to have it on top of one another for these purposes, which is why I usually purposely don't save enough space to write it out uh, the long way. Um, I'm going to go ahead. The first thing you want to do here, we have one side of the equation that is in an x squared, an x, and a constant, that form, um, a quadratic. I want the top or the left side, if you will, to be the same. Our old SATs, good for practice for the new SAT. Um, the ones out of 2400, uh, I would say some of them are, but there are, an, there are sections in there that aren't, just aren't used anymore, Robot Dancer. Um, I mean, it's not gonna hurt for you to know vocab, but they're, like, they don't really test you on just vocab. So it can help. B equals 19 by Draenor. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to get, go ahead and plug this in. Or not plug it in, but distribute. Thanks. I'm going to get 6x squared plus 10x plus 9x plus 15. I'm going to go ahead and combine these. So I get 6x squared plus 19x plus 15. Draenor knows what they're talking about. Would you like to explain? Feel free to say how you got to it, uh, but they're correct. So the way we do this, and this is a pretty straightforward one. This is very um, clean compared to some of the others. What we're looking at, and we, we are proving symmetry. Or it is pr Symmetry has been proven to us. What that means is I can say that this is going to match with this. My B is going to match with this and C is going to match with my 15. Meaning, and we don't need to know all this, A equals 6, B equals 19, and C equals 15. They're asking for B, and like Draenor said, B is 19. 
Now, this next question uh, is going to be a more complicated version of this. Um, it's, I would say this happens probably once in SAT. So it is um, a question type that is good to understand and good to know. It's not, mm, yeah, it's not a simple topic. It's not going to be a basic or elementary topic. Um, it should be pretty clear now after you've seen it a little bit as to how they do it. Um, but it's not going to be one of the easier problems. This is the easier version of this problem. Also, are there any questions? The math section, are they like Brady? I would say they're pretty similar. The 2400 SAT and 1600? You know, I never in terms actually of, saw a 2400 SAT. I, the topics will be similar. I wouldn't, I would use it for practice problems, not for timing, Robot Dancer. I also, when I was in high school, I only took the ACT. Um, but it's not like the math topics are going to have changed much. It's just that how they tested it will be different. So if you're just looking for more practice questions, I think it'll be useful. Um, Otherwise, I would have to actually look into it, but I don't, it's not something we worry about because they don't test that way anymore. All right, the next question that normally I can do from memory, but I'm going to make sure not to, so there's no chance I mess up here. So we have AX plus 2 times BX plus 7 is going to be equal to, and again, I like to write it, um, lat laterally, I guess, top and bottom. That's going to be equal to 15x squared plus cx plus 14. The question says, um, if this is true for all values of x, okay, we've got that, we know we can have symmetry, and they give us a plus b equals 8, uh, what are two possible values for C? So find two possible values of C. Now this one's a little bit weird. Um, the answer choices are written out as pairings of numbers, right? The 3 and 5, 6 and 35, 10 and 21, 31 and 41. It's not nearly as straightforward as uh, the last problem. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a second to try this on your own. Uh, Draenor, if you feel comfortable and you think you've got it, let me know. Um, I'm going to erase this and then go ahead and jump into it. But I want to give you guys a second to kind of look at it, see if you have an idea of where to start. And if not, say so. If you do, feel free to let us know. Um, I would say official PSATs are good practice for the SAT, yeah. The timings are slightly different, um, but it's, I mean, yeah, it's the pre- SAT. All right. If there are no questions, I'll jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 15x squared plus cx plus 14. Now I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this. So I have abx squared plus 2bx plus 7ax plus 14. What I know here is that my 14s are good. I'm going to group my x squared terms and my x terms. Uh, that's supposed to be an x, sorry. Um, if I didn't make this clear earlier, the reason I can group them like this is because they're all attached to the same power of x. Right? So all my x squared terms group together. All my x terms group together, and then in theory, all my terms that are x to the zeroth power, which is just one, my constants, get grouped together. If there are any questions on that, let me know. Now we have three equations. All right, we have this one. We have 15x squared equals abx squared, and we have 2bx plus 7ax equals uh, CX. All right. Is does it make sense so far um, to the viewers watching right now how I got to where I am? 
10 and 21. Not quite, Rabbi Dancer. How I will... Any other questions? If not, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. The way I like to think about this, um, or at least the first step I do, I can get rid of all these X's, right? Because I can just divide them out. Are you just guessing or are you going, are you, are you solving for it, robot? Um, now I have 15 equals AB, 2B plus 7A equals C. The two equations I really care about are A plus B equals 8 and 15 equals AB. So these are the ones I'm going to worry about right now. With these, I can actually solve for A and B. And the way I can do that is because they're telling me that I'm going to find two possible values. So I don't have to know what A is and what B is individually, but I can tell you what they are together. And that's probably confusing until we get to what I mean there. I need a value that multiplies to equal 15 and adds to equal 8. All right, if we find all the factors of 15, we have 1 and 15, we have 3 and 5. Exactly, Robot Dancer. So we want 3 and 5 because that also adds up to equal 8. Why they say two possible values, which one's A and which one's B? Is A 5 or is B 5? We don't know. We can't know, but that's fine. It doesn't actually matter because we're going to get the two possible values. And what that means is I'm going to get one value when A is 3 and B is 5. And I'm going to get my second value when A is 5 and B is 3. Now, I know my two values, and I'm going to plug them in. Uh, plug them into this equation. Right? We've used these two equations to solve for A and B. Now I'm going to plug it into my last equation. I get, so let me just rewrite this to make it a little cleaner. 2B plus 7A equals C. Now, let's say for my first one, I'm going to have A equals 3, B equals 5. Now, for this one, I just plug it in. 10 plus 21 equals C, C equals 31. All right, Robot Dancer, you were good on the first one. Can you beat me to what the second one's going to be? I have A equals 5, B equals 3. I now have uh, 2, 10... I did that wrong. No, I didn't. I just, I'm thinking that's an A. All right. I have 6 plus 35 equals C, or C equals 41. Close, Robot Dancer. Um, a little tip for these types of questions as well, or anything that involves multiple, multiple steps. Um, the answer choices are written out, so you have A, B, C, D, it's 3 and 5, um, like 9 and 10, 10 and 21, and 31 and 41. What you want to do, I didn't have to do the second part. Well, I mean, it saves me maybe 10 to 20 seconds, but I didn't have to do this step. The reason is because none of these overlap. Uh, I don't think B and C do. I just wrote those wrong. Yeah, it's ugh, 6 and 35. All right. If I know that none of these values overlap with one another, then as soon as I get one value, whether that's 31 or 41, I know my answer is D. Something to keep in mind when you're going through this, um, part of it is strategies for how to answer quickly, right? You, you don't have to do both of these last steps. And again, it's not going to save you tons of time, but if you're ever pressed for time, being able to save yourself 20 to 30 seconds is, well, it can be a, a big advantage. All right. Are there any questions? And did Robot Dancer post one in the Discord? Yes, I did. All right. Do you want to do it or I can look at it? Um, I already looked at it. Uh, I can do it. Okay. Um, if there are any questions, let me know. Let me go ahead and clean this up. And then, Brady, those are my two problems I had for this topic. Very good. Very good. All right, Robot Dancer. Hello, I did the math wrong. Very good. Um, <clears throat> donut company question. I love donuts. 
They make Don't. cream filled donuts using a quarter cup of dough and one half tablespoon tablespoon of cream per donut. Those are important. I'm going to write those down. Write those down. One Brenda gives me a little bit of space here. There we go. Okay. So every donut uses one fourth cup of dough and one half tablespoon of cream. Sweet, sweet, creamy, creamy, cream. The company decides to change the recipe to use three times the amount of cream for their new triple stuff donuts. Let's think about that. They used to use half a tablespoon of cream. Now they're using three times as much. What would that be? One half times three is going to be three halves. So either one half times three, three over two, or you could think of it as 1.5, it's the same thing. So this is the old recipe. And then the new recipe is going to be 1 fourth cup of dough, because that has not changed. But now we have 1.5 tablespoons of cream. OK. If the Dumbity's Company new recipe uses the same amount of dough per donut, which is, I already read that, so, but there you go. It's, we're going to still use a fourth cup of dough. Um, what is the ratio of dough to cream needed to make 12 triple stuff donuts? Great. Here's the thing. Ratios are simplified, just like fractions, okay? The fact that we're making 12 triple stuff donuts, it's going to simplify to the same thing as if you're just going to make one donut. If they're, even if they're multiplying everything by 12, you can then just simplify the ratio by dividing everything by 12. So forget the 12 what? stuff donuts. Just think of one donut. One donut has... One fourth cup of dough to one and a half, I'm going to use three halves here, to three halves tablespoons of cream. Great. But that's not one of the options because these are not whole numbers. We do not like ratios if they're not whole numbers. We love whole numbers. So we need to bump all of these up. We have to somehow make them into whole numbers. And I would take a look at your denominators to do that. Okay? Yo, thanks for the like, Reese. We got a like? We got yeah. a like? Thanks, Tyrese. Oh, thanks, Tyrese. I'm going to multiply everything by 4. 4 is the largest denominator here, so I think that's going to be a good thing. I multiply everything by 4. 1 fourth cup times 4 is going to just turn into 1 cup. That's great. 3 halves times 4. I'm going to do that right down here. 3 halves times 4. I'm going to put 4 over 1 to make it compatible with fraction multiplication. Is going to be 12 over 2, which is 6. So this is going to turn into... Six tablespoons of cream. Robot dancer. Dance dancer. Robot dancer. Does that make sense to Sean you? Sean Connery. Sean Connery, the hunt for Red October. That was a, not bad. And that's it. And that's what we got. Maybe the 12 donuts got you. Forget about 12 donuts. Forget about it. Yeah, what if I did one fourth divided by three halves? You can do that. You can do that. That fraction can also, a ratio can also be expressed as a fraction. That's absolutely fine. So one fourth divided by three halves. Just remember how fraction uh, division works. You flip the second fraction, which is called taking the reciprocal, and then you multiply normally across. So this is going to be one fourth times two thirds, which is going to be two over 12, which is one over six or one to six. Same thing. That's completely fine, Robot Dancer. I'm glad you brought that up. All right, we're going to talk about main idea questions, and then we're going to go back to answering your questions. Okay. Brando, can you pull up 67C, the ACT? Yep. And we're going to go to the last passage. In English? In reading. 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 Uh, I love reading. Okay, you guys. Boom. Let's go. We're going to talk about, let's see, yes, the eel. Yeah. Yes, very what good. Um, just show the, that's good right there. We'll, right. we'll chill right there for a sec. Um, we're going to talk about in the reading section. This applies to the SAT as well, but right now we've got an ACT pulled up. How you should go about answering main idea questions. These are questions that say things like, the main idea of the passage was what? Or, you know, the main idea of the fifth paragraph was what? We're going to talk about that right now once I get rid of all this stuff. Well, then get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to do it, Ready? I swear. Come on. You just I'm literally trying my best right now. 
I could not be putting more effort into erasing this than I already am. I think that's actually pretty sad, then, I'll be honest. Yeah, no, I, I think that's sad, too. Yeah. This is the fastest I can move. Uh, that'd be tough. That would be tough. All right. All right, all right. You're good, you're good. Very good. Okay. So we have a great, great main idea question that is going to be, um, it's one about the entire passage, which actually, sorry, Brendan, go up a little bit. Oh, there it is. There we go. Number 31. One of the main ideas established by the passage is that blank. So here, at this point, you've probably read the whole passage. So what you need to remember here is that a main idea is something that is touched on throughout the entire passage. It is not something that is just a minor detail. Okay? So you might find something that's true, but it's just a detail that they talk about in one paragraph. It's not the main idea. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these options. Um, I am going to say, if you want to get the main idea from a passage, there's a couple different places that are a really, really good idea to look. Um, over here. Place number one is to read the introductory paragraph, okay? Obviously, it introduces you to what's about to be talked about for a whole passage, so there's a lot of good things to look at there, okay? Place two is the topic set. This marker is not great. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna throw it. Oh, yes, that's great. Topic sentences of your body paragraph, S multiple. Horizontal, but. Yes. I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to do the other way. <laughs> we go. Topic sense is your body paragraphs. I like this mix of color here. Okay. And then place three is your concluding paragraph or your conclusion. Things that are mentioned throughout all of these are definitely connected to the main idea. So let's walk through a couple of these answers. A. Researchers have nearly exhausted their resources after spending decades investigating the Sargasso Sea. If you've read this, this will make a little more sense. But one thing I'll say is that this passage is not about researchers exhausting their resources. This is mostly about eels. It's describing eels. It's describing what we figured out. Our concluding sentences of body paragraphs are important. They're more important than the body sentences of body paragraphs. Um, it depends really how much time you have. If you are a fast reader and you can get through the entire passage, uh, then you can do that, and you'll, you'll have time to finish all the questions. If you're not as fast of a reader, and you struggle with finishing these passages, then using a skimming strategy like this will help. And I would say I've, I've seen students do pretty well with, with just going through these three places. So if you have time, if you have a little bit more time, sure, go ahead and look at the concluding sentences. They'll usually give you some kind of a transition to the next paragraph. Um, but if you're just doing a lean, mean, reading for speed machine thing, um, whatever. Then, then this is about you know the twenty percent of the passage, and you'll have a decent idea of what's going on after reading that. Okay, so uh, yes, this is not about researchers. It mentions them a couple times, just saying you know this person figured this out. But most of it is about when eels are this old, you'll find them here, and when this are they're this old, they're gonna swim over here, and then they're gonna do this. It's mostly about eels. So and you know people spending their money researching is not really talked about that much. So it's got to be something that you keep seeing over and over. This is not one of those things. Can you show us where the topic sentence is specifically? Oh, yes. It, it is the introductory sentence of each, of each paragraph. So the topic sentence of every paragraph is the starting sentence of that paragraph. And that is SWIC. Um, yes, so entire intro paragraph. Let me write, make sure that you write that. This is paragraph. You're reading the entire introductory paragraph. And then you're reading the first sentence of every body paragraph. And then you're going to read the entire concluding paragraph. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, a topic sentence is not something that you have to find somewhere in there. It's, it's the one that starts the, the, uh, each body paragraph. Um, OK, moving on here. Um, significant gaps still remain in researchers' understanding of the life cycle of eels. OK, that sounds like it's kind of promising. I have nothing. OK, good. Yeah, I, have, oh, I, I should have erased that. I have nothing necessarily against that. Let's just see if we can eliminate other options. So we're going to get rid of A already. I should have just kept that. Um, eels live their entire lives in Sargasso Sea, but no one has ever seen them there. Okay, if you have read this, then you'll know that eels, they talk about eels going all over the place. Eels are all born in the Sargasso Sea, but amazingly, a bunch of eels end up in North America and Central America, and a bunch of eels end up in Europe. And if you miss that, then there's a pretty large chunk of this passage that you missed. So this is contradictory. We know that this is not right. 
So elimination is going to keep winning the day for us. Female eels turn into silver eels toward the end of their lives. If most of these paragraphs were about female eels turning into silver eels, I would say go for it. But this, even if you didn't read this, you can tell this is an incredibly specific thing that they can't talk about for an entire passage. And if they do, oh my god, that passage is going to be really, really boring. Because it's going to be like about the technical specifics of how female eels turn into silver towards the end of their lives. It would not make for a great passage, trust me. This is just a detail. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that because the main idea has to be something that is all-encompassing. A lot of the passage can fit underneath it. So we're left with B. Now, here's a good uh, play. I'll show you why conclusion is a great place to look for B. Um, Brendan, can you bring us down a little bit? Yep. Um, wait, real quick. Yes. You already, you, so you solved this question. Or you answered it, right? I've gotten to B, yes. Okay. Have you told them about strategy in terms of these types of questions? I would ignore this question or save it for last time. Oh, oh, that's a great point. Yes. Before we skip it. Okay. Brendan's got a very, very good thing to say about this. Um, but I want Brady to say it. But he wants me to say it. <laughs> Thanks, Brendan. He's very generous. I got you. He's very, very giving. So the main idea here is something that you will get at the end of the passage, and you'll know it better after doing all of these questions. So when you see this, this is something you should leave till the end. Immediately skip this, do the questions, uh, you know, pass this. But when you're done with the passage, do not forget to come back to this. Just by doing the questions, you'll be diving into the text. You'll be finding evidence. You'll be learning a little bit more that maybe you just skimmed through. So by the time that you get to this, it will be a lot more prominent. This is a science paragraph. Will this work on literature and history? Yes, it will. Main ideas are something that you'll know a little bit better after you do all of the questions. Yeah. And as far as the, um, what? Certain, certain, um passages only have like three paragraphs yes true so those right. you can't really yeah certain that's true certain certain essays certain uh passages have very very large paragraphs so you're going to miss a ton of information if you're just going to read intro topic sentence and, and a uh, concluding paragraph so you need to exercise a little bit of uh discretion in choosing when to apply the um looking for the summary points yeah there's um, Sorry, can I cut in? Yeah, go for it. Um, so this is Brady and I's method, or I, sometimes we'll probably just read all the way through it. Yeah. Levi, who is not here to explain it, so I'll hopefully do him some justice yeah, here. Yeah, see if you can. How he likes to do this, or how he get, makes it through reading passages, because he is a, a slow reader, um, self-admitted. He says that instead of reading um, topic sentences specifically, he just starts reading from the top, right, the intro paragraph, and when he has a good understanding of that paragraph or that section, he just skips some lines and then continues reading. So he ends up reading probably about half of the passage, just skimming till he understands it, moving on a bit, skimming. That way, what you really want to do is form kind of a mental map of where everything's located, hmm. right? So I know here it talks about this about the larva, right? Here it talks about this maybe when they're growing up, and here it talks about when they start to um, travel or migrate, and then here's where they you know, breed and have kids and it kind of starts over at the larva. Like just really being able to have an idea of where things are, um, are more important. Yeah. And you know, Robot Dancer, you're right. This is more helpful for science because a lot of science passages are organized like this. There's a lot of discrete paragraphs and you can see what each paragraph is about. For things like literature and history, um, it's a lot more crucial that you understand what they mean because the language can be difficult to understand sometimes. So for that, we would recommend reading chunks of it. Figuring out how to translate it into like your own thought language and just writing a little summary next to it. Like, you know, this paragraph is about, let's see, um, this woman was very uh, interested in women's suffrage and she was mad that she wasn't allowed to participate in this convention. And it might be really, really complicated in a lot of old fashioned language, but you got that. So just write that little next to it, okay? Make a little summary, move on. It's more important with those that you are translating them into things that you understand. For this, it's not going to be that difficult to understand. There's just a lot of information, and you have to find the information that each question applies to. Um, okay, Brendan, can we pull, pull me down to yes. the last paragraph? So we've already figured out, just well, by I mean, process of elimination, sorry. that... Uh, yeah. I was in, sorry, the, yeah, right paragraph. there. That's good. So I'm going to get rid of these. So we know it's going to be B, but let's just read a little bit of this just to show you that there is, in fact, evidence to say that. Okay. So we have, at least that is what today's marine biologists and naturalists tell us, although adult eels have never been seen swimming, reproducing, or dying in the Sargasso Sea. In fact, eel, uh, live adult eels have never been seen there at all. 
The only real adult, uh, the only two adult eels ever reported in the Sargasso Sea were dead, found in the tentacle, uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to see this, the stomachs of other fish. So, after all this information about where these things are found, it turns out that they haven't actually ever been spotted um, in the Sargasso Sea, which is very interesting, okay? So it looks like there are some things that we don't really know yet, like why haven't we found them there? Um, there later on, they do talk about why they know for sure that that's where they're from, um, but there are some holes here. There are some holes in the introductory paragraph as well. The known facts, that's how they start this, saying that they're, they're implying that there must be some unknown facts as well, which right off the bat tells you, we know some things, we don't know all of the things. So, again, you read through this, you will see that there's not total confidence in a lot of these things. There's some conjecture. Um, that's kind of a common theme throughout the whole thing. All right, we got one more question in here. Uh, bring us down to questions, Brendo. Which question? Yeah, absolutely. 33? Uh, we're doing the 33. Yes. Get rid of this. Okay, 33. The main purpose of the fourth... Here we go. You should concentrate. You the main should. purpose... I should just look at it. Yeah. That's what I should do. The main <laughs> purpose of the fourth paragraph is to describe the what. Let's go to the fourth paragraph, Brendan. Yes, sir. 34 to 47. Uh, here we go. From here to here. All right. This is not that much. Um, so, introductory sentence is going to be pretty important. From the estuaries and mouths of rivers, the tiny eels frequently continue upstream, particularly the females, who sometimes go great distances inland. And that's the first sentence. So they're talking about these eels going inland using rivers, okay? Up here, we heard about how they were born in the Sargasso Sea, which is part of the ocean, and then now they're going up through rivers. Um, you can skip a little bit, look down a little. It looks like, okay, they settle in, live there as long as 20 years, growing up to a yard long, before beginning their journey back to the Sargasso Sea. So they apparently migrate up rivers, chill, and then after a long period of time, come back to where they were born. Let's go to the question. <laughs> They just chill a bit. They just, yeah, no, eels are actually the, the most uh, chill of all sea creatures, apparently. They've done, they've done a lot of studies. Okay, so let's look at these. The main purpose of the fourth paragraph, it just, it's similar to saying the main idea. It's not exactly the same thing. It's more like, why did the author decide to include this information? But anyway, eels transition from fresh water to the ocean. Well, that sounds like kind of what we were talking about, but... They were going upstream inland. They were going from oceans to rivers. Um, so this is the opposite of what we were reading about. So it, it looks great, but until you actually look at the order they give you these things in, you'll realize this is contradictory to what we just saw. It was ocean to fresh water. So that's out of there. You're gone. Method of determining the age of eels. Huh. They mention it, in the they mention it at the very end of the paragraph. It is a detail, not the main purpose of the paragraph. Okay. Main ideas need to be found trickled throughout the entire thing. So one detail that is there, great, it's there. It's not a main purpose, so you can't pick that. Okay, complexity of the Mississippi River system. Well, they mentioned the Mississippi at one point. They say that the eels have been found as far up the Mississippi as Iowa, but that is about eels and how when they're born, they migrate and go up rivers and things like that. It's not about the Mississippi River. It's not. It mentions it. It's not about it, okay? The river stage of the eel life cycle. That connects right to the very topic sentence of this paragraph. That's the first thing we hear about is they migrate up rivers and they end up inland. And the rest of it is about when they're living there for 20 years and just hanging out and growing huge up to a yard long. Then they eventually come back. This is one that's much more general. It's just a nice umbrella concept for what a lot of the stuff in that paragraph is talking about. So we're going to pick this one. So, yeah, basic points. Elimination is always going to help you. Do not pick details. There are things that are true. ACT reading looks easier than SAT. Robot answer, I tend to agree with you. SAT but, reading has more difficult questions, but ACT reading you have to go through very quickly, and that is the difficult part of it. Yeah, so it's kind of hit or miss. It depends on the student. Yeah, it, it definitely depends on your own reading temperament and things like that. Um, but in, in my mind, I, I do like this a little bit better. Uh, yeah, okay, then we're going to move on. We've got questions now from you guys. We have some robot dancer questions still. Um, you know what? There was a constants and coefficients question I found in the SAT. Do you want me to just show it to you? Which one? Uh, it's the one where it says which one of these uh, is the equation of this parabola with the x-intercepts as constants oh, in the uh, equation. Yeah, you want to do a linear there? Draw it out. I can draw it out for you, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, no. oh you know what? I think it's on my iPad. Oh, Brady. This yeah. is a disaster. 
I'm oh, sorry. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. We just lost like three seconds. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. 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 I got you. Here. You want to erase that while I write this? Uh. Yeah. Do I want to? Will I? Yes. Yes, you will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Don't you dare. You know, I watched that new Robin Hood movie today with the. Uh, I don't remember the actor's name because I'm not good with that stuff. Tyler Egerton, maybe? No. I didn't see that movie. Was it good? I. You know what? For what it was, I appreciate it. It had Jamie Lee Foxx in it. Not Jamie Lee Curtis from Freaky Friday. Jamie Lee Foxx. Is it just Jamie Foxx? I think it's Jamie Foxx. I, I think got mixed Jamie Lee Curtis and Jamie Foxx. Yes. <laughs> Which would be a great mix. I. Yeah, anyway. anyway. It's a great name regardless. But yeah, he's in it. Um, okay. I think it's Tyler Egerton or something like that. I don't know. Which? I think he's the one in the, the spy movie, like Our Generation's Mission Impossible with the young actors. Oh, uh, Kingsman? That one. Thank yes. you. So he gets it. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is a parabola. It's kind of summarizing what they said. Yeah, they yeah, never yeah. just say, this is a parabola. <laughs> By the way, it totally is. Uh, which the following is equivalent, um, is Two. equivalent, and uh, here we go, displays... The X intercepts Ooh, okay. as constants or coefficients. Great. Um, and then I'll go ahead and start explaining this if you want to write the yeah. answer options. Go for it. Thank you. Answer choices. Okay. Earlier, I was talking about constants and coefficients and those types of questions. Um, the topic of the day, though, or the math topic, is uh, mirroring coefficients. And we're going to kind of expand on that and kind of let it be um, any of these questions that really deal with um, asking about constants or coefficients in either um, the extent that we already talked about it or in the actual answers. So x-intercept is when y equals zero. Yes, that is correct, Robot Dancer. Yes, yes, you're very much right. Um, these types of questions, again, I think are SAT specific. Um, it's just something they like to ask. I think it's very silly, to be honest. Um, but in, And you'll see that in a moment why I think that, um, hopefully, or I'll at least explain why I think it's silly. Um, and why it tries to make a very simple topic a little more confusing, which I think is silly. All right, so we're given the equation, we're given this a parabola, and we want to find one of these that has, is it D? It might be, we'll see. It might be, but it has the x-intercepts as the constants or coefficients. The first step you want to, or the first thing you want to do is solve for those x-intercepts. So like Robot Dancer said, that's when y equals zero. So I'm going to say zero equals x squared uh, minus 6x plus 8. Uh, now I'm going to factor this, and it should be, yeah, x minus 4, x minus 2. Good call, Robot Dancer. Um, and at which point I know that my x-intercepts are 4 and 2. At that point, I want to go and scour A, B, C, and D. And I want to find, it says it displays the x-intercepts, right? Plural. All right. It has to have 4 and 2 in the answer. That is almost the only thing you're looking for. It, really, that is. Most of the time, when they, mm, yeah, I think almost every time they give you these questions, A, B, C, and D are all the equation, just written in different forms. Um, and if not all of them, most of them. That way, if you try to solve it out or try to plot them both, all of these are going to work more like more often than not. I'm, I'm generalizing. I haven't gone and proven that for these, but that is usually how these test questions go on the SAT. So I'm trying to find exactly what they're asking for, the x-intercepts. That's 2 and 4. Now, which one of these has 2 and 4 in it? A? <laughs> no. What? It's, just, it's like so easy at this point. Yeah, it's so easy once you <laughs> understand what they're asking for. It's not B, it's not C. Oh, look at that. It's D because I see a 2 and a 4. That's, that is how you do this. It seems really complicated at first, and then you see how the question is done. You're like, oh, that's a stupid question, um, and it is. That's, that's how you answer it. Yeah, that one's way more about, do you know how to find the x-intercepts? Because once right. you do, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked Robot Dancer's next question that was about the angles. Go for it. I want to do that one. Uh, you can help me erase, though, if you want. I will. I'll do it right now. Would this be categorized as a quadratic question? 
Um, yeah. Yep. Depends on who's categorizing it. Whoa. But, uh, I mean, technically, the, it is quadratic, and you are finding the x-intercepts, which is pretty common with quadratics. Yep. So, yeah, I'd say, generally speaking, you can think of it that way. Mm. All right, also, Robot Dancer, we're going to start going over some of your questions you'd post in the Discord. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, the chat, the Discord. Robot, um, you're fantastic for asking us questions. Yeah, we appreciate it. Everyone else needs to be like Robot. And not feel any emotions and just work on, like, cars all the time. Like, weld and stuff. Is that, like... Okay, bear with me here. Yeah. Is a robot working on cars, like, the equivalent to a human being a doctor? Or is it more like a human being a vet, since they're not quite the same Oh, machine. I see, because it's kind of itself. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a car... It feels weird. It's made of the same stuff, but a car was... I guess car isn't really a robot. I guess it kind of is. Where's your iPad, by the way? Uh, it's over here. Okay. I mean, it's... Right? What's the most complex if thing a robot built on a this robot. kind of test? Um, it depends on the student, right, to say what is more complex for them. But I really do think that if you haven't seen it before, what we went over at the very beginning of the stream, I would argue is probably the most complex because you have to have a really deep understanding of math yes. or you have to have seen the question before. It is – to solve it is not difficult. It's not – it's usually a number of steps, but it's not something that is conceptually difficult. It is just a concept that they – don't really go over much in school. Yes. Uh, no. Bingo, 455. We, we were. Are, we were years ago. Yes. We both graduated college a number of years ago. Yes. Brady's Ever since the older. accident, we have no longer been students. <laughs> the accident. Yes. That's right. I'm older than Brendan. That's why I'm so much more bulky and muscular you than Brendan. You are older. I feel like I'm doing like a monkey thing. Uh, they are students of Twitch University. That's right. Aren't you a student of... That's what we should have called this. Twitch you. Wow. That would have been good. Uh, I graduated in electrical engineering. I graduated in product design. So which like is mechanical. Mechanical. Yeah, mechanical engineering. Throwing some art. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> Fun. Uh, a degrees and another thing that is B degrees. All right, you just have two angles. Um, you're going to trademark that name. Well, it's in the public domain. Hey, studying electrical engineering too? Why did you smile then? I'm so sorry. It's, I'm so, so sorry. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, the sign of A degrees equals the cosine. Oh, good thing EE, -E, the EE -E is doing the math. I think, Brady, did you take, I think we took a similar number of math classes. I mean, he did mechanical, so he also had to take, I didn't have to take thermo or uh, oh. fluid. Thermo. I, oh. I'm so happy. Ah, ah, ah. My gosh, that class. That was one of the worst grades right. I got. I was, Mine was just physics. so not interested in that kind of thing. I, I realized I wasn't interested in the physics behind EE yes. when I took a grad level EE physics class and understood nothing. I, yes. I passed and I was like, I'm never doing that again. That is, that is how I knew. That's not what I wanted to do. Yep, 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 yep. I was right. like, it'd be really fun to work at, um, I kind can't even think of the name, Lockheed Martin. And oh, like yeah. develop some things. And then I'm like, I just don't know. I can't, I, it's, it doesn't work with me. And probably because I just didn't have a good baseline. Um, Draenor, good thing. The, oh, I thought that was bingo both times. But Draenor, if you multiply both sides of that by negative one, you will have to flip the direction of the inequality sign. That is the one way that inequalities differ from equations. Uh, no, Robot Dancer. I don't think that a couple of Bs are going to ruin your college dreams. Theoretical mathematics, but theoretical is worth nothing if you don't apply it eventually. I, I, all right. Um, what is find K? That's what we're trying to do here. You don't need the answers, do you? You're just going to find it? No, I'm just okay. going to find it. That's good. Great. Now, hmm. Draenor, I have some thoughts on your name. How did you how did you come up with that name? I'm curious. All right. What we need to know first of all is that if there's a there's an identity here, a trigonom trigonometric identity um, that you should know if you're taking these tests. All right. If I have sine of x is always going to equal the cosine of 90 minus x. All right. This can be reversed as well. So I can write the cosine of x equals the sine of 90 minus x. And we're going to use that here. And what I'm going to do is simply replace a or b, whatever, with 90 minus the other. That might have sounded confusing. I'll just go ahead and write it out. I'm going to say the sine of a is going to be equal to 
the cosine. Actually, yeah, you, you I just want to do A and B. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> in middle school, ages ago, I knew it was going to be RuneScape. No joke. That's why I asked. <laughs> oh, man. Being, oh, being a nerd is fun. Yeah, I played it way back as well. So, mad respect, I guess? I don't know. It was fun while it was a thing. All right. A equals 90 minus B. Note, I could also say that B equals 90 minus A. Both of these are true. Whoa. But I'm going to go with this one for the equations here. I'm going to choose a different color. My orange is kind of running out, and my yellow is the best marker I've got. <clears throat> now that I know this, I'm going to substitute A with this. So I have 90 minus B equals 4K whoops, uh, minus 22. And I still have B here. Um, and I'm going to plug that in as well. I'm going to put both these in. Now, oh, do I want to clean this up first? Nah. Yes, I do. It'll be gross otherwise. So I'm going to just go ahead and say 90 um, plus 22 is what? 112? Brady? Yes. Okay. 112 equals 4K, like the TV, plus B. All right, I added 22, and I added B. Clear as mud? Any questions? I say that in some of my sessions. I'm like, is that clear as mud? They're like, yeah. I'm like, you're not listening, but that's okay. <laughs> like, one day you'll, you'll, you'll think, like, wait, what? Yeah. Brennan, are there more trig identities I need to know aside from Sokotoa for SAT? Um, are those... Two, the most common one. There's a couple I, other ones. There's a couple other ones. You want to know law of sines, law of cosines. Um, can we practice solving nonlinear partial differential equations? Not now. now. We can do no. that with uh, a tutoring. We, we do, yeah. Practice. So we do this for free, but we also tutor privately outside of this. Robot dancer. A couple other ones. You need to know that tan. You want to do it on the far side there? Yeah, sure. I'll so I'm going there. to now substitute B as well, and I'm going to continue doing this while he covers that. You gotta know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine, and you also need to know Pythagorean identity. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. Mm -hmm. Can I do that right? Yep. Great. You do that in your calc class. But yeah. Can we do law of sines and cosines? Forgot how to do that. K is 12.5. Did I add it wrong? Yes, I did. Thank you. I looked at Brady for that. Oh, sorry. I looked in inward. I didn't look at his work. There it is. The first time? No, it's definitely not the first time I've made a mistake. It's at least the third in my entire life. Definitely x is greater than or equal to 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, oh, okay. definitely. Okay, Robot, you got another one here. I like this one a lot. Let's clean Can this up. Can you hand me that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then do you want to go over sines and cosines? Yes. Well, actually, this was... This was Robot Dancer's question. Okay. So, Are you comfortable with... Yeah, I can do law of sines and cosines. Sorry. Or we can do it after. No, we should do this now. Just... It's Swick. Trying to keep it... Swick is, Swick is very important to us. Every time I hear that, I cannot not think of the like junior college next to us. Southwestern Illinois College. They talk like that? Swick. They're like... Oh, Swick. Yeah, they're going to Swick. They also called it Swick-cess as like a joke. Ah. The people that went there called it that as a joke. It was That's fun. I like that. Kind of morbid. Um, what did you specialize in in EE? Um, I, Swick says Swick comes first. Swick always comes first. <laughs> um, I don't know, alphabetically, robot, mm. R, S, anyway. Um, I, my emphasis was in hardware and software, so digital system design and also a lot of computer science. Okay. I'm gonna let you have it. Thank you very much. So, law cosines and law sines work when we have triangles that are not right triangles. If we had right triangles, we could just do Sokotoa and it'd be a blast. Yeah. Law of sines and law of cosines help us figure out what these missing side lengths are and what these missing angles are. 
Again, if we were just doing right triangles, we could use Zogatoa for that stuff, but we're not using that. So consider a triangle with angles A, B, and C, and then opposite those angles are gonna be side length capital A, side length capital B, and side length capital C. The law of sines, one of my favorite laws, states that if you take any side length and divide it by the sine of the angle opposite it, that will be a ratio that will be the same as any other side length of that triangle divided by the sine of the angle opposite it and the other side length that you can see where this is going, okay? So, a application of this, let's just try it, let's try it. Let's imagine that we had a triangle, very exciting, it's a nice triangle. We're gonna say that this is <laughs> 95 degrees and it's gonna be 10 and we know that this right here is 30 degrees. Is mayonnaise also a triangle? No bingo, mayonnaise is not a triangle. Horseradish is not a triangle either. You guys teach better than my, math, my calc teacher. Well, don't tell them that. Yeah, don't tell them that. Well, you can tell all your students' <laughs> friends that. Good thing that we're not paid at all. Hey, uh... Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, so let's say we had a triangle that's 95 degrees, 30 degrees, and we're trying to find this side length right here. Horseradish isn't either. Yes, horseradish. Yeah, I already said that, don't worry. Uh, we sorry. established that horseradish was not also a triangle. Um, we could figure out the angle here very simply, knowing that all angles add up to 180, but that's not the important thing. We're trying to find x right here, okay? Law of sines is great if you can establish one of the pairs and you have one set, one element of another pair. So we have a pair here. We have, and by the way, you could also rewrite law of sines with all the signs on top. Sine A over side length A is equal to sine B over side length B. It's the same as this. Everything is just flipped. There's no difference here. Okay, so I'm going to use the pair that I know. I'm going to say that 10 over sine of 95 degrees. I'm going to set that equal to the side length I don't know over the angle that is opposite to that side length over sine of 30 degrees. Okay. The only uh, thing I know in this that I actually know off the top of my head is that sine of 30 is one half. I don't know the sine of 95 degrees, so good thing we have a calculator hanging out right here. Hey. Hey. Whoa. Hey. Algebraically, to solve this for x, I would just need to multiply both sides by sine of 30. So I'm going to do that right now. So x is going to be equal to 10 times the sine of 30 degrees over the sine of 95 degrees, which is going to give me 10 times sine 30 so five. divided by sine of 95. Is it? Oh, wow, that is super close to 5. 5.02. Hey, look at me. Hey. Hey. Oh. Did you mean like, look at me, I did something? Or yeah. you wanted me to actually well, look at yeah, you? Yeah. Because I'm looking at you. Those marker residues look toxic. Yeah, like, like Britney Spears' Toxic, like the song. Which is it's cool. We like that song. Yeah, it's like how I was saying earlier. It's like when you say words that are normally bad, but now they mean good things. Yes, they're very good things. They're extremely good things. Uh, excellent. Okay, now let's talk about law of cosines. Because SWIC comes first. Okay. They're, they are neon, so they are supposed to look... Here, I can clean that up. Thank you. You go ahead and get right. Oh, man. All right. Let me, let me fix this. Yes, this is called division of labor, everyone. Law of cosines. Or just delegation. I might have needed that triangle, but it's too late. Well, I already erased it, right? I know, I know. You didn't say not to. I didn't say not to. Um, you can get rid of that, that's fine. Yeah, I okay. Want. Okay, another triangle. Same thing. Uh, we've got angles A, B, and C. Side lengths, capital A. Side lengths, capital B. And side length, capital C. Do you guys have a table with the sine and cosine values? 0 to 30, 45, 60, Yeah. Easy to remember. Yes, we do. Oh, yep. I know a way to make it easy to remember as well if we want to go over that know the table it's easy to remember wait are you saying us you're asking us like a good way to remember it or are you just asking us if we know it saying that it's easy to remember because i do have a good way to remember it no i'm gonna get yeah, that's unit circle stuff just if you know it. oh yeah we know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah yeah don't worry about it we got you know we got one half root two over two root three over two all that stuff i just think of it as you go up from root one over two root two over two root three over two root four over two so then it's two over two yeah Interesting. Okay. Yep. All right. Here's law of cosines. C squared, the side length, is equal to, uh, I should use my capital letters because that's what represents the side lengths. A squared plus B squared. Is wow, that, that looks just like Pythagorean theorem so far. Don't you mean E over M? We're not done. 
C minus squared is E over M? Two, no, get out of here. <laughs> minus 2AB, Einstein, cosine yeah. of C. Law of cosines. So to find some third side, if you know the other two sides and you know the angle that's opposite the side that you're looking for, you can use law of cosines. Or you could use it to find the missing angle, right? It all depends on what variables you know and what variables you are going to solve for. Uh, so uh, let's give ourselves a little example, shall we? Yeah, a little example, yeah. I'm my own group of backup guys. What do they call those guys? Just the, like the dumb hype guys men? behind you that are like... The hype men? The hype men, yeah. More like an evil gang. Henchmen? Henchmen. Henchmen. I'm my own henchman. Yeah, you should do that. Okay. So, so we got 20 degrees here, um, and we've got, no, I don't know, like 10 and 11 here. But what is this? What's our C length? Well, let's use a lot of cosines. It'll be great. C squared is equal to 11 squared plus 10 squared minus 2, 10, 11, cosine of 20 degrees. I, I am. Correctly. I know. Get out of here. 20 degrees. Great. So solve this for C, we're going to need to take the square root of all of this. So I'm just going to redraw this out with a big square root over it. All right, so we have 121 plus 100 minus, that's going to be 220 cosine of 20 degrees. So if you just put all of this into your calculator and then take the square root, you're going to be golden. Plus 100 minus 220 cosine of 20 degrees, and then don't forget to take the square root, <laughs> I never do, is, uh, so my, own, my own henchman, is 3.78 approximately. Do you do tutoring lessons on calculus of variations? We do tutoring on all the calculus you see up through AP Calc BC. Calculus of variations. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Like multiple, like... What, calculus of variations? That's a term that we probably just don't know, or, or also is known as other things. I don't know. Uh, C is equal to 3.78. Yes. Swick, is this making sense? You related don't need to understand. Rate. Yes, related rates. Yes, we do that. Um, you do not need to understand... Uh, although that's a different person saying that, that's Lane Gamer. Um, why law of sines and law of cosines work? There's a derivation that'll probably have in your textbook where it shows would, you where they come from. I really like Khan Academy's explanation. explanation. Yeah, Khan Academy does have great explanations of, of where these equations come from. You just need to be able to plug in the right values depending on the right situations and find the thing that you're missing. Sal Collins has um, got a nice velvet voice and he just he really, does. he just knows how to explain things. He to does. Me. Yeah, Sal is, he's, we like him. You know his 10 year anniversary for starting Khan Academy was like a week or two ago? Was it really? Yeah. 10 years, huh? Yeah. What a massive, like, oh gosh, thing that yeah. he did. And it's, it's so straightforward. Like, how did, of course we were going to have that at some point and, you know, it's good that we have it now. Anyway, that's law of cosines. Yep, we will need to know these for the SAT and ACT. Um, Good question, good question. Yes and no. Okay, <laughs> yes and no. You should have a little bit of experience with them because they sometimes come up where they give you the equation to use and they have a quick explanation for how to use it, but other times we've seen it where they don't, they don't give, give you the equation anything. to use and yeah. you just have to know how to use law of signs. So one thing that I will recommend is on the programming part of your calculator, you can just write an equation that you can pull up in your program again. It doesn't even need to pop up. You just go to your equation, ma make a new program in your programs, and just write this in an equation, uh, and then just press enter, and then quit. If you ever open up that program, go to edit, and you'll just see your previous notes in there. Yep. So you can, you know, for the SAT, uh, they give you a bunch of equations for the SAT, but they give they you do, law of signs. They don't, they don't no. give you law of signs and law of cosines. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hey, you can answer your question yes and or no. Yeah. yeah. Can I do the uh, frizz one? Frizz? The robot dancer Frizz one? I haven't even seen it, so let's let you do it. Very good. All right, robot, we're coming back to you. Also, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. You can join our Discord. Um, that's where Robot Dancer has posted all of their questions. Um, yeah, we have a YouTube, a Facebook, a Twitch, a Twitter, an and Instagram. We are getting more uh, busy on those, on those platforms. Yeah, we are. We have a really... Really funny gag reel from yesterday where Brady makes me look like a fool, and I appreciate it. It was funny. <laughs> it's excellent. It's but so he, good. But he's like, hey, you, you don't really need to check out this video, this gag reel before I put it up, do you? I'm like, no, it's no, it's fine. I don't really care. And then 
someone in our Discord is like, yo, this th- this this new gag reel is hilarious. I'm yes. like, oh. And then Brady's telling our roommates about it and just crying, laughing. And gag like, reel Uh-oh. January 24th on YouTube. Check it out. It's the most recent video we posted. And it's just... There's a great Brandon clip. If, if nothing else, skip to like two minutes in, I think is where it's at. Yes. It's just me looking like you a fool. You will know what you're looking for when you see it. I knew as soon as I made the face that like, oh, that's probably going to be <laughs> like clipped, but... It is a great, gosh. great face. Oh, gosh. We love that stuff so, here. So, while you're doing that, we, we do this for free five nights a week, Sunday to Thursday, 8 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern, um, and we live stream on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, feel free to share this with people. If you like us, feel free to follow. If you're in college, thanks for stopping by, Drain or and Bingo. Cool, cool thing. Um, we, if you want to ask questions about college things, you can. So I'll probably answer some questions about EE if you want, but you're just bringing up some P- PTSD stuff for me. Um, yeah, it can be anything related to the SAT, ACT, or college questions. What else? Brennan's um, personal life. Yeah, no, we don't need to go into my personal life. Well, that's why it's fun. No, that's, that's we okay. We don't need to go um, into it. We do tutor privately. Our website can be found um, in the Twitch description below. I don't think I put that on... Facebook and YouTube because I'm just a scrub, but it will be there soon. Um, scrub word. Yep. Quick. Name the seven Maxwell equate. Stop. Stop. Wait. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. They're magnetism and electricity equations. Yeah, I, they I are. Know, my head. I'm not gonna do that. Bingo. This is ACT SAT. You you think too much of us. It's been. I at one point I can tell you I probably knew those except that was the physics class that gave me the most trouble. Which was then why I decided to do electrical engineering. Yeah, bingo. You feel happy. You feel like a big person. Can I tell you how many times I used that? Never. Ozarks, one, two, three, four, hey. mobile. Hey! I feel like I'm being funny. Oh, that is not Ozarks. That's Oscars. I'm not dyslexic. I don't <laughs> think. No. No, I'm fine. Next time. Um, thanks. There's a, there's, like, there's a Netflix show, Ozarks, and then I'm from Missouri, where there's like the Ozarks. That's what they are. It's like the Ozarks are in Missouri. It's more a huge... coastline than California. Yeah, actually, though. More coastline than California. Pretty so... amazing. A lot of people don't know that. Hi, hey, hey. Oscar. Do you have questions? Hi, Oscar. We can put you in the queue. Do you want to go in the queue? Is that where you want to go? Huh? You want to play with your treat? You want your toy? <laughs> I could, okay. Um, all right, go ahead and go Fantastic. ahead. Fantastic. Okay, they give us a chart with some x values and some f of x values for some polynomial f of x. And they're asking us, which of these must be a factor of f of x? How are we going to know? Must is a strong word. Must. Yes. It has to. It's musty in here because of Brendan. Not and quite what I... Big traps. Okay, what you need to know here is the connection between factors, solutions, roots, and intercepts. One day I'm just going to lay underneath where we're stepping just mouse traps, so that when you walk in, you can actually have a reason to say Brennan's traps, and I will just laugh. Oh, I didn't see where that was going, and I liked it. I liked it yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's pain for you and Levi. It's yes, great. I do like that, especially when it's your doing. Yeah, Oscars, if you have any questions, let us know. We, I, uh, Ideally, you're a high schooler who has still taken the SAT or ACT, and we can answer your questions on that. Um, if not, thanks for tuning in. You can still ask us questions. Fantastic. Okay. So, we talked about this a couple days ago. We talked about the, the connection between factors, roots, intercepts, uh, solutions. Um, and there's one more. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if some function is factorable and you get something like this. So let's say x plus 2 times x minus 6. Okay? These are the factors, x plus 2 and x minus 6. If you want to solve this thing for the x-intercepts, like we did earlier today, what that means is you put 0 in for the y-value, because that's when you're on the x-axis, when your y-value is 0. So if you set this equal to 0, you got x plus 2, x minus 6. You can use what's called the zero product property, which is Ooh. whatever x-values make each of these factors individually 0 is your solutions, are your solutions to this problem. So x plus 2, the value that would make this 0 is x being negative 2. For this one, it would be x being positive 6. So these right here are your x-intercepts, but they're also called your solutions, they're also called your roots, they're also called your zeros, okay? So whatever the factor is, inadvertently tells you what one of the solutions is, or one of the x-intercepts, okay? So let's go over here. In order to find a factor, sorry, it'd be nice if we knew what one of the solutions was. And remember what a solution is. It's an x-intercept. It's an x-value that gives you an output, a y-value of 0. Do we see any y values that are zero here? Do you want to circle it? Yes. Something to, something to know. Let me remember. Yes. Your output, your f of x, is your y value when you graph it. Mm-hmm. We do have a zero here. 
we have a y value of zero when our x is four. Positive four. Positive which four. Which is important. Yes. What is, uh, uh, okay, e to the i pi, is uh, it's equal to zero. Wait, I used to know some of that stuff too. Yeah, e That's to the i pi. That's electrical engineering stuff. Uh, plus one is equal to zero, which is incredible. It's, an, it's a mind-blowing Well, it's thing. imaginary, so. <laughs> it comes up in electricity. Um, yes. It does. Yes, it does. Every time I saw it. If four is a solution, that tells us what one of the factors is. We must have x minus four in this function, because when we plug four in, this gives us a zero, which is where that zero comes from. Foreign? Where are they from? Foreign? They're from, um, Svea. Spain? <laughs> I don't know. Why is it f of x? Why can't it just be y? Why are they making it complicated? It's a type of uh, notation. notation called yeah. function notation. So this is f of x is y when x equals this value. So if I were to say f of 3, sorry, f of 0 equals 3. So f of 0 would be y equals 3 when x equals 0. Yeah. Uh, Robot Dancer, there's a couple advantages to using function notation. You get to name functions. So if you have a like physics problem where your y value is your height and your input, your x value is time, you can name it h of t is equal to, you know, usually it's like physics e negative 16 t squared, blah, 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 it's acceleration. Um, but this function would give you an output of your h value, which is your y value, with an input of t. Later you'll get questions like, what is f of g of 5? That is right, ssj purvis. Yep. SSJ. Which purpose. is pretty neat. Robot Dancer, any questions about this one? Because it's going away, so I don't even want your questions if you have them. I'm kidding. That's I always want your questions. I'm kidding. I just felt like being aggressive. And maybe I should have waited, but that was just a lot. I was aggressive. They're just know. children. Think about the children. <laughs> my, my joke for that. Still I gets take it this year, and I have a B in the class. Hey, well, Robot. He tutors it. I tutor physics. And I avoid it like the plague. And speaking <laughs> of the plague, y'all should spread us like the plague to your friends. Yes, you should. Oh, it was yes, you should. Slick. Hey, robot, how would you like to be taking AP Physics B this year and have a C in the class? Right? Because for three easy payments of seventeen ninety-two, <laughs> It's a good year. It's a good it's year. It's a great year. Depends on who you were. Uh... Uh, okay, uh, Robot Dancer, are there any more questions in the Discord from Robot Dancer? Oh, there's Dancer? One. one more Robot Dancer question. Oh, the trapezoid? Hey, you're good because you're the lord of the traps. I hate you. It was so coming. Much. There's no getting away from that, is there? Amber Muffin's no longer on, but if you ever watch this, Amber Muffin, why? Why did you do that? Why did you make them call me that? It's not okay. Okay. All right, in the quadrilateral above, let me draw it for you. Something like that. A, B, C, D. Mm. And they give us this. Mm. Boom. All right. A, D, and B, C are parallel. Fancy. And C, D equals one half of A, B. So it's half as long as A, B. Good to know. What is the measure of angle B? So find measure of angle B. So we want this angle right here. Sorry. No, it's fine. I will say, here's something that I like to do. Yeah. Just do a little bit of that. I like that. So this is half of that. So that's 2x. This is x. And I'm going to just bring this over here. Yep. Do you want to finish it? I mean, I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to do the problem. You just yeah, did 90%. I don't, I don't know. know. You could keep going. Oh, now I get... I get to do this one? If you want me to, I'll finish it. <laughs> you I'll, you did everything I was about to do. I like so. pink. I just wanted to make, because, you know, I'm not sure you have a pink marker, so I, I, just, was, I was taking one for It's not as new as yours. <laughs> all right, all right. Sit down, Brady, sit down. Yeah, so what Brady did is absolutely correct. Uh, you don't necessarily want to work with fractions because they can be useful, but if you don't have to use them, uh, don't. And so we know that CD is going to be one half of AB, so we can just say, well, I'm gonna make this one so that it's two, instead of making this one and this one half. Because we know that this is these two are parallel and this is 90 degrees, we can just shift this line over, like Brady did here with the dotted lines, and we have a square here, and then I have these two. Um, I don't think we know necessarily that it's a square. Uh, sure, sorry, 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 sorry. You don't know that it's a square, but you do know that it's a rectangle. Thanks for the clarification there. At this point, we know the ratio between the two uh, 
legs. If you're taking this on the SAT, you want to flip to the front of the booklet where it tells you, oh, this is a 45, 45, 90, or this is a 30, 60, 90, because there's certain, uh, uh, certain, certain, I don't know. I'm saying words. There are certain ratios that you should know for the ACT and that they let you get away with not knowing on the SAT. So SWIC, this is one of those things that you don't necessarily have to know if you're taking the SAT because uh, you can flip to the front. Um, this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 90. Where are we at? Keep going. Hey, Storm. Good to see you. Um, at which point... Oh, did you reply to that email today? This uh, is yes, totally I tangential. Yep. Um, yes, robot dancer. And thank you, Purvis. Certain is not not certain. No, it's not not certain. Don't do that. Don't get me like that. Oh, are you just going to have them up? Yeah, I'm just going to have them up. Keep okay. going. Keep going. Um, right. Of course. So we know that this is going to be 30 degrees. This is going to be 60 degrees. Um, and we know that because we've moved this line over and they're parallel, that this part right here is 90. Meaning, like Robot Dancer just said in the chat, that we have 90 degrees plus 60 degrees equals 150, which is our answer. And this is why. So this, on the SAT, this is given to you in the front of the math section for both sections, calculator and non-calculator. So what you do is either you know this by heart, or you, and especially if you're doing the ACT, you should, you should memorize this, or you should know this, right, more so than just memorizing. Formulas to know for the ACT? Well, here's one of them. Here's some of them. There are a lot, Storm. We can go into that for a while. But we can go over and just spew some of those if you want to do that. Formulas to know for the ACT. Um, but we have this ratio of 1 to 2. 1 to 2. And we know that the angle that is opposite the 1 is 30 degrees. And the 90 degrees, the hypotenuse, is twice that. Does ACT give formulas also? No. no. Although occasionally... Um, how do we know that it is a 30 and 60 degree triangle? So because of this ratio right here, because we know these two um, sides and this angle, we're able to say it's going to fall into this category. Yeah, only 30, 60, 90 triangles have the pattern where one of the legs is one half of the hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, formulas. Here are some formulas. We love formulas, baby formulas. Brady has a notes page for it. We do. All right, um, anything else? No, robot dancer, that's what I was going to say. For formulas for the ACT, if there's a formula that is required that is something quite difficult, they will give it to you in the question. So occasionally I've seen questions on the ACT where they will give you the law of sines and cosines, right? They'll say, note, whoops, and then they'll give you something that's important there. Um, and sometimes they'll give you equations, but for the most part, no. SSJ Purvis this is the 60 degree angle, and this right here is a 90 degree angle. So angle B is the entire one, which is going to be 150 degrees. And as far as 30 and 60, 30 is the one that's opposite the side that's half the hypotenuse, which is, this is the smallest side. 60 is opposite X root 3. The hypotenuse is 2X. Mm -hmm. And I have a child, so I must leave. Which yes, is, I don't do. have any offspring. I have a, I have a tutor. Student to tutor. Yes. Do you want to give me that list of things? That's my phone. I'll text it to you. No, yeah, just text me. Yeah, I will. Okay. okay. Um, or do you want to just post it in the chat? I can probably do that. The link to it? Yeah. Here, let me do that. All right. Or we can put it in the Discord as well. Both things are... We'll probably put it in the Discord after this. Uh, Robot Dancer, Brady's going to go ahead and throw a link to... Was it Robot Dancer? Storm. Storm. Um... Oh, oof, oof, oof. Bye, Levi. JK. Robot dancer? I'm not Levi. Yeah. I'm going to put it in tall. general. Discord right. general. Um, Storm, we are sending a link to the uh, a list of formulas you need to know for the ACT. Uh, we're putting that in our general Discord. So the, the got that. name of the sheet is SAT formula sheet, but if you understand all these formulas, you're going to be in good shape. Uh, they're, they're pretty much the same on both tests. Yes. Okay. 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 All right, you got. I, dude, you gotta go. I have to go have now. Okay, robot dancer. You might want me to be Levi, but I gotta go. Well, Levi wasn't even here. Yeah, and he gets credit. <laughs> this is actually very sad, and I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, uh -huh. my grandfather's memory is not great anymore. Oh. And my cousin went to have dinner with him the other day, and as he was leaving, he said, "Bye, Brady." And so t Tom doesn't get credit for going. I got credit. That's rough. Uh, do you have one for the SAT, a bunch of formulas? Yeah, this, this sheet we're putting in the Discord is going to have both. 
They're, the ones you need for one are almost exactly the ones you need for the other. Uh, robot dancer. All right. Okay. Any other questions, guys or gals? We have 10 more minutes. It can be questions about college. Ideally, it's about the tests, so you have, you know, answers for that. Ideally, you take the tests before you go to college, you know, kind of keep things in chronological order there. Also, Draenor, or maybe it's, no, 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 bingo, 455. If you're still here, where, ah, don't worry about it, robot. It was a score, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's a score. Um, bingo, you're studying EE, why and where? I'm curious. I have reasons for why I studied it. Um, they were not great reasons. I'm always curious as to why people choose that path <laughs> as someone who did and, you know, had to go through that. Um, you're right, Purvis. Um, any other questions? We got 10 minutes. I can, I can riff solo, but that's not fun. You applied to uni two months ago and haven't had a response yet. I think that's pretty normal. The non-multiple choice math questions are harder than the multiple choice questions. The next ACT is February 9th. Um, do you think that the non-multiple choice math questions are harder than the multiple choice? No. Um, I, I actually disagree with Purvis. So the multiple choice tends to be able to, the non-multiple choice um, tends to throw in lots of circles and triangles and angle theorems and uh, proofs. So you need to kind of have a good understanding of that. Um, but you, I would say that they're, they're similar difficulty. So the, the multiple choice questions, you have a better shot of get guessing. Um, so I would do those last and I would, especially if timing is an issue. And even if it's not for anyone out there taking these for the SAT, start with the fill in the blank first. All right. Or the short answer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because if you run out of time and you have to guess, I'd rather you guess when you have a 25% chance of getting it right than when you have a almost 0% chance of getting it right. Um, but the difficulty, uh, Swick, so question one is much easier than question 15. And it's not necessarily a linear scale there, but it gets more difficult as you go. And this is for the non-calculator. Then at 16, it starts over again. 16 should be about as easy as one, two, or three. Question one, two, or three, right? And then question 20 is going to be easier than question 15. It might cover something you're not comfortable with, um, but in terms of just straight difficulty, um, it, it generally is, is easier. My friends all got accepted. Don't worry about it, Purvis. Um, yeah, so Purvis, you can work with the answer choices. You're right. But I think because of that, they tend to make them a little bit more challenging in terms of just math problem to math problem. If you didn't have the multiple choice for either, the ones that do have multiple choice, I think they make them harder to account for that. Um, there is less room for little mistakes. Yes. Just a quick reminder, 12 days and three hours till the ACT. You made a countdown. That's rough. All right. Hmm. Uh, does that answer your question, Swick? Maybe. Also, bingo, maybe you're just not here anymore. Y-E-E. -E. You have a Discord question. Yep, just came through. Oh, Pollux. Oh, you just made a time and date thing. That's rough, man. Why would you do that? Uh, okay. Okay, let me see this. 16. Oh, what is one possible solution? Yeah, so I'm assuming you mean 16, not 17. So if x is greater than 0, and you have x cubed, x squared, minus 5, oh, come on, equals negative 4x. All right, now what is one possible solution? Fear is the greatest motivator? I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. That can be rough, man. Um, okay, Robot Dancer. It looks like you've had a lot of work on this. Um, for these types of questions, there's also oftentimes more than one right answer because um, it'll just say what is one solution or what is a solution, and sometimes there's a list of solutions. So um, as long as you get one of those, you're fine. Uh, but let's go ahead. So right here we have x to the fifth minus 5x cubed, um, and I'm going to bring, I'm going to add this 4x over. So 
plus 4x equals 0. Now I'm going to divide by x. So I'm just going to say everything's divided by x. And now I have x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. At this point, I have something that is very, very familiar if you look at it the right way. Um, money is not always the greatest motivator either. It depends on the person, guys. It depends on the person. Some people fear really will motivate them and others like, ah, who cares? And some people are really money motivated. One of my best friends in the world is, he's like, it's a point system. I just, I want to make money. He's like, I don't even want to use the money. He's like, it's just a point system. I want to win the game. And other people, I don't know, man, if I, if I have a roof and some food, why do I care if I have a lot in the bank? Um, it just depends, right? Zero. From here, what I want you to recognize, Robot Dancer, um, hopefully you're paying attention, not just trying to talk about what the greatest motivator is. This is very similar to something x squared minus x plus 4. 5x. All right? It's the similar type of thing here. What I can do, because I know that, is I'm actually just going to have x squared instead of x. And then I'm doing this, I'm, I'm factoring this just like I would any other quadratic. Right, I have, it multiplies to positive four, and adds to negative five, so negative one, negative four. So your answers are going to be one or four, it looks like. Right, negative, negative. Negative 4 plus negative minus 1 is, yeah. All right. So your answer should have been 1 or 4. I think your answer was 1, so you're good. Looks like you might have done it a hard way. Robot Dancer, does this make sense? Oh, x squared. Thank you. I told you I'm not perfect. Uh, yeah, so we then go x squared equals 1 or x squared equals 4. Thanks. Um, then you have the square root is still 1. So it would be 1 or 2, I think. Yeah. 1 or 2. And that is why you always sanity check, which is what Robot Dancer said they just did. You plug in the values back into it, see if it works. And yeah, I was just rushing through and didn't even think about it. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, at this point, you can also plug in values if you feel comfortable with it. All right, negative two works here, but they said they want x greater than zero. So that's why we get one and two and not plus or minus one and plus or minus two. We have three more minutes, if there are any questions. Um, you guys know we do free tutoring online like this, five nights a week. We do private tutoring. If you're interested, we cover a multitude of topics. Um, Brady does a lot of subject tutoring. Um, we all do ACT, SAT, and some SAT subject tests. Um, yeah. We have a YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have a Discord, check it out. Um, if, you're, if you want to know if you want to check us out tomorrow, first of all, the answer should be yes, you want to. But our calendar is linked in all of those places. You can check to see if um, what topics we're going to be covering in the next couple of days. See if there's something you know you need to work on. Come and join us. Also for grid in. Grid in, okay. If you get a negative answer, it's wrong because they don't accept negative answers. Oh, for the... Multiple, yeah, yeah, for not multiple choice. There you go. I don't think I've heard it referred to as that. It makes sense. It just took me a minute. Also, if you guys like it, feel free to like, subscribe, subscribe or follow, and uh, spread us like the plague. Share with your friends. Give them a free resource. Tell your teachers. 
Tell your school counselors. Tell your principal. Tell your parents. Why not? Tell your pets. If you're friends with your pets. I don't know. If they don't bite you. All right. See you, Robot Dancer. Doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, we'll go ahead and see you guys tomorrow. I believe I should be back. Um, go ahead and have questions prepared for tomorrow, guys. Go ahead and check out our calendar. Uh, doesn't have to be questions related to it, but it gives you an idea of what we're going to cover so you know if you want to be here for the first 30 minutes while we cover that or if you want to join after. Makes it a little easier for you guys. Um, but we'll see you tomorrow.